This is Damon with PixNub Software. In this video, we're going to be going off label with sports photo automation here. And we're going to be doing something that's not sports related. So just because it's called sports photo automation doesn't mean it has to be used for sports. It's useful for lots of other things. In this example, we're going to be replacing images inside this jewelry box. And those are going to go underneath a necklace that has a drop shadow applied. This is a very simple setup and very easy to do this in SPA. So the top layer is a jewelry box with a cutout. The layer below that is a necklace that's got a drop shadow applied in the layer style. And then the layer below that is the SPA setup layer or the setup layer group that is. Now for this, you'll need to use player mode nine or 10. Those are the only two that you can use with um, applying perspective on a smart object because they'll keep the perspective. The other modes will reset your smart object and bring in a new one. But these two modes will use the existing smart object. I'm not gonna go into too much detail on that, but just know that player modes nine or 10 are what you need. And actually mode 10, if your images have different aspect ratios, which I don't recommend, but if they did, you would need 10 for sure. If they all have the same aspect ratio and you make your smart object the same aspect ratio, then modes 9 or 10 will work the same. So I'm going to hit add player layer group. And it's really best to make sure all of your images are the exact same size um, and then select the exact size of your source images. And in this case, all of the images are 1,000 by 1,000 pixels. So I'm just going to use that for the dimensions. And that's actually setting up the dimensions of the smart object itself, not the dimensions of the um, template. So we can see our smart object here. And now the next thing I want to do is scale and move that into place and apply the perspective. So I think the easiest way to do this is to turn the opacity down so we can see the um, background through it. Eventually, it's going to go in the bottom, but for now, I'm going to leave it on top. I'm going to first rough in the perspective. So edit, transform, and perspective. It doesn't have to be perfect because this is a smart object, and I can go in and change this. Oops, I didn't want to do that. Yeah, let me try that again. I don't know if I skewed it. So... All right, somewhere in there. And then I'm going to now scale it. So Control T on Windows or Command T on Mac scales it. And the perspective is not quite right, but that's okay. We'll just get it roughed in here. And then redo the perspective. And because it's a smart object, you can go back and forth as much as needed between the um, scaling and the perspective and you're not going to ruin any quality here. So I'll just keep going until we get this perfect. You zoom in a little bit here. I think it's about close enough for this demonstration. You can be a little more picky with your own. Now I'm making sure that this overlaps a little bit here because this is going to go underneath and we don't want a gap of transparency. So as long as it overlaps a little bit here, it looks pretty good. So then when this goes underneath, I'm going to move the entire group underneath. Always keep the um, SPA group together. And in the case of modes 9 or 10, there's only one layer in the group. But nevertheless, keep the um, entire group together. And so now this is underneath the necklace and underneath the jewelry box. If any additional masking was needed, you could do so on the layer mask for the group. However, um, since this is going underneath 
a cutout image where the, only the center is cut out, the image itself is acting as a mask, so we don't need any additional layer masking. So now I'm going to hit Add Custom Player Image, and this will bring in one of those source images, just so we can test this here. And it did keep the perspective, although it's a little bit hard to tell because it's not too much of a perspective anyway. But if we, um, I can show you here. So if I hit perspective again, you can see it did keep that same perspective on the new image. And that's because it just simply opened the smart object and it replaced the contents within the smart object. So now I'm just going to save the template. And this template is ready to go for the automation. Now, when you're in the automation, I'm going to show you how this has to be set up. And for this, you just need to select your folders, but then also the only thing you need to check is this Use Smart Objects. If you don't check this, then depending on the image, it may not bring it in into the Smart Object. It may, um, it may just create a new layer. Now, this Use Smart Object, if it's unchecked, is designed to not... Um, bring images in as smart objects. That's to make it run faster and save memory during your batch. In some cases, if this is not checked, it will still go into that smart object and use it as a smart object if it has to. But um, if you know you're going to need it with the perspective, just make sure this is checked and that will force it to use the smart objects. So then we just need to select the um, source image folder. So the source images that's going into the temp template, so all the images that's, that's um, going to go into the jewelry box, that will be in the players images folder, even though they're not players, that's the folder we'll use. And then the save folder, we've got one designated there. Then for the template file, just grab that jewelry box, PSD that we created, and that's it. So just select my three folders, make sure smart objects selected. I'm just going to hit run. Now while it's running, oh, I actually did see it change. Sometimes on the screen you don't see it change. Um, because when Photoshop is, when Photoshop is batching, it doesn't always refresh its screen, but nevertheless you know that it is doing its thing. All right, so that finished at three and a half seconds per image, so pretty fast. Now I'm going to go in to that composited folder we just made. Let's open all of the images. So these are all your final composited images. And it kept the perspective that we set and put the um, images into the jewelry box underneath the necklace with the drop shadow. Very, very simple to do with SPA. And so I recommend using SPA for lots of different things other than, than just sports. Um, I mean, it was really just branded as sports photo automation because a lot of the PixNub users shoot sports, and so it made sense to brand it and kind of tailor it for sports. But there's so many uses for SPA. And one of my goals for the near future is I'm going to be creating more of these videos as well for more off-label, non-sports uses, because there's so many things it can be used for. Anyway, thanks for watching, and I hope you learned something with this video.